Morning world and welcome to Saturday the 18th of April. We've actually had some rain. We've actually got some wet stuff. I can almost hear it growing. Good morning, ladies. Anybody got anything to tell me? It doesn't look like it. You really, really ought to get on with this, you know. Grass is growing. Okay. You've got plenty of that. That's just... What a difference a bit of rain makes. That was a lovely, dry, comfy hay bed yesterday. Today or this morning is a nasty wet... Would you just give me a minute? Today is a nasty wet sponge and they ain't going to be laying out there. Never mind, they've got plenty of, plenty of dry bed indoors. All right, it's coming. I'll give you some grub, all right? Oh, God. Moan, 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 moan. I don't need the help, I can manage. It's coming. I reckon they got a taste for the feet to pellets now. And they're crossing their legs so they can uh, keep on having it. Not other lambs, but there are some very, very swollen bags there. We are, any minute, one of those could rupture into lambing. We're kind of on the due date, so should be any time now. It would be nice to get lambing over and done with. I can clear the barn out then. And put some kit under cover. I hate leaving stuff outside. But, um... Once we've got this cleared out, we can literally start putting stuff back in at the rain. Okay, so the bag's on that. Okay, so those two, still a bit thin, but like I say, I don't want to get them fat because the lambs get too big and you can't get them out. Everybody happy in there? Need the puddles back. Hopefully we can do something about that later this year. But you all seem happy enough. Okay, birds. Can you hear that? That's the sound of grass growing. Eureka. Bit more of this, a couple of warm days, maybe cattle can come out. I just need to get this in front of them a bit, so. But even the footpath that I cut a few days ago is actually starting to disappear. Always a good indicator of grass growing. If the footpath disappears in a week, I know the grass is growing, so. At last. Long may it continue. Well, even after a fairly hard prune last year, our orchard trees are starting to come into flower. These are all um, eating apple varieties down here. Um, that's a James Grieve, I think I remember. Um, I've actually on the walk in down here, I was trying to remember <laughs> which trees we planted in which order, but I can't remember which was which. Uh, they're all eating apples, but there's two, two James Grieve, which is that little fella there and that one over there, the two little ones I know. Uh, one's a russet, I think. 
and I think one's I think one was a pippin, orange pippin. Uh, this is not a um, apple. This is actually a pear. So sort of difference in the showy leaf. So, but some of these flowers are already setting. I hope the frost didn't get them. We rarely get um, any fruit on our pear trees. I don't know what it is, whether the frost gets them or they're not happy here, but there is quite a lot of potential fruit on your list this year. So maybe this is the year we'll get some fruit, maybe. So, morning ladies. I suppose I could cake them while I'm here, couldn't I? Save you walking out there. Come on up. Let's have a look at you. Look at that stream's running again. Not fast. I don't want it to run fast. I want the water to stay on the ground, really. Come up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 all present and correct so. morning ladies yeah you're not getting any you're staying that side especially after yesterday it was horrible it was like having a cold wet bath mat trying to get between your knees I didn't like it Okay, so um, the golf course didn't get any 2010-10 in case anybody misunderstood. I think the devil's just going through that wire. So there's no um, nighttime fertilizer put out here. This just got limed. Uh, but it's a golf course and apart from a crop of hay and some grazing, nothing's actually really been taken off this land, so it shouldn't really need that much. Whereas this grain, this side, has been heavily grazed and cropped for the last 20 odd years. So we've put the nitrum out there with a view that if the golf course needs a bit more, we can, but I don't really want to be feeding trees. Um, so we'll see. This ground usually recovers quite quick. It's just slow off the mark this year. But yeah, hopefully that's, that green out there is the result of me spending lots of money on fertilizer. At least I hope that's what it was. Okay, so that's my first of the morning jobs done. I can now go and have my breakfast. Now, another hour for you. I know you, duck. She's in there with her legs crossed. She wants to go lay in that hedge over there. An old crow will be around here somewhere waiting for her to do that. So she can stay in there until she can't hold it anymore and put it in the box with the rest of them. So you remember a few weeks ago, a friend um, gave me a cockerel. We were needing a cockerel and he dropped one off. So I owe him a favor. Uh, I think the favor has just been called in because yesterday we found this. This is Tom's saw, which apparently is in need of a sharpen. So I think Tom's had a go and he can't get it to cut. So I'll take it down to the workshop and we'll have a little quick one-to-one -one on sharpening saws, farmer pea styley. You coming, biscuit? Come on in. So I've had a few people request uh, chainsaw stuff. Now, bearing in mind, uh, I did my training in the nineties, and I don't do a lot of hands-on stuff with the kit now. The guys do most of it. But I think I can remember how to look after a saw chain. Well then, what have we got here? We have got a still MS-180. Uh, this is uh, not a professional saw. This would be what I would call a sort of occasional use hobby saw. I need my glasses. That looks like 3 8 low pro. So I need to check what size chain we got on here. So on the side of the barrier, you can see um, the link size, how many links. So this is a 3 8 low profile chain. Um, 
which is the same as we use on our um, let's put that in the way it's the same as we use on our cloning saws and uh, this has got um, the safety links in it as well so um, I'll go through the um, chain and the links in a minute and tell you the differences but uh, first off we'll just put this chap in the voice and just see where we are Right, let's have you down a little bit. Okay, so it's not awful. Chains a tad tight. Right, right have we got a joining link in here anywhere? What I'm looking for is two links facing the same way. Sometimes you'll get a chain and you'll think, oh, I've got two links on the same side. Why is that? And that's just literally where the chain was joined. And quite often that's where there they are. So if you look at this, you've got two links on the same side. This is because this will be where this chain is joined. So we know that. So we'll have a quick look. All those rivets look good. Everything's good. He is still a bit tight. So you shouldn't have your chain quite so tight, Tom. That's a 4.8. That's 532, 4 mil. That is 3.22 mil. Oh, that's the Pico chain. So maybe we will go with the 4 mil. Right, okay. So um, if you haven't got adjoining um, cutters, you need to mark a cutter. And we normally use, where have they put it? We would normally use a marker pen and just put a dab on where we started. Uh, something else I would use if I can find it. Tree team would be a bit messy with their tools here. Oh, there it is over there. So it's very important when you're sharpening your chains that both sides are exactly the same length. Now, people are either left or right handed. So when you're sharpening, you will find that um, you've got more power. Even if you do the same amount of strokes, you've got more power one side than the other. So it's quite handy to know Okay, so they're not a big difference. I don't think you sharp this very often Okay, so sharpening your saw 30 degrees. That's what we're looking at. So a 30 degree angle on this guide you've actually got I don't know if you can see that You've actually got lines on there which mark your 30 degrees so you can literally just get it at the correct angle this this plate stops you going too deep um, so lots of folks sharpen with their arms i sharpen with my entire body so we'll start here and work no actually we'll start there and work, work our way backwards so from 30 degrees one two three four five little tap i always do a tap at the end because sometimes you get a burr is that enough no six seven eight still a tap edge on eight cool nine ten little tap Okay, so that's going to be 10 each. This is going to take a while. I tap out the foil occasionally on the vice, so any bits of foil is left in there get moved out. So that was the last one. If anybody's wondering why I'm going that way with the chain, it's because as I'm pulling the chain, I'm pulling it away from the cutting edge. If you go the other way and you slip, you take a chunk out your finger. So always push the chain forward or pull the chain forward. If you're too tight, you can actually use the foil to do the work for you. But um, ideally you should be wearing a pair of gloves for this.
You got your angle? Try and keep your stroke as straight as you can. The last thing you want to do is be bending around. So keep your edge nice and straight. Right, we'll just do a little bit of a comparison so if you can see the difference. So, if I just show you the cutter in here, so it's obviously dirty inside. I don't know where we're going to focus, but on top of there, there is, can you just see that the edge of this is chipped and taken off? So basically the chrome's been taken off of there. Um, so it's just, it's just dulled. He's probably touched the dirt or something. So on this one, which I've just sharpened, obviously nice and shiny, but we've got a nice straight edge now and we're cut right back into clean chrome. So basically all these are chrome plated. Um, so you do not want to see any uh, normal steel. You want to see chrome all along the straight edge and at your 30 degrees. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. I find using my whole body is a far more stable because basically you're holding your hands at the same angle. If you're using your arms, you can tend to sweep so that's why i use my whole body plus i'm actually sharpening the saw more of my legs than my, my arms on a big chain it gets tired i think that was 10. you lot allowed to go back and count so okay that's one side done so we're back on to the side now I can't do it the way around, so I've got to turn the saw. Seven level. So, uh, not quite so easy to use your body on this, but you've got your angle, you've got your straight line across there, so you've got your angle, so you know where you're starting from. I'm going to be a bit tighter. Now I'm right-handed, this is harder, I gave it 10 strokes on the other side, so I'm actually going to give it 11 on this to make up for the fact that I'm not strum. Turn that a little bit. Just a little flake of chrome. If you leave a little flake of chrome on there, what can happen is you use the saw and that little flake of chrome peels backwards and actually can reveal a little bit of um, metal. So you're better to tap it down and break it off downwards than let it peel back. <clears throat> Last one. So we've got the two joint links, so we know the joint link is there. Just that little bit of chrome. Okay, so that's the that's the cutting links done um, and some people might think that that's it it is actually it on this one but as you sharpen your cutting links down you can see they slope downwards and backwards this link in front is known as the raker or the safety link now there are different types of safety links as in there are also different types of cutter links um, and I have because I knew I was going to do this I've actually prepared something to show you and I've written on a bit of paper so I can explain it so there are three basic types of saw chain um, and between those three basic types there are a multiple of 
increments. Um, but basically, if you look at the profile of this, this chain, it is, I don't know why you can see that. Um, this would be what we would call a safety come semi chisel. Now to explain that, uh, most people won't come across what we call a chisel chain. That is what professional foresters use. And if you see guys cutting down trees in the forest, you think, wow, that thing is fast. He must have that dead sharp. Well, he's got an advantage in the type of chain he uses. So these are the profiles. So basic profiles. So we're looking at the chain from, we're looking at say this link here from this angle, okay? So there, this would be the profile of a professional chisel chain, which is very fast. That's not that, because it's got a, got a rounded edge. Okay, so this is a bit nearer. This would be like uh, a semi-professional, um, uh, regular, like farmer use sort of chain. So, but this curved edge here, slows down the cutting speed of the chain. It's not as sharp, All right? And then you get down to the really safety, slow hobby chains. So your little B&Q special or whatever else you buy will have a profile much more rounded like this. And that compared to the professional is it's dead slow, all right? But the thing is with dead slow, you're much less likely to get a kickback. So a professional saw user, user using one of these has probably got years and years of training uh, and experience and he understands all the forces that are involved with using a chainsaw and kickback being one of the most dangerous. Um, now there is something else that reduces the chances of kickback and it also affects the speed of the saw and that is the rakers. So if you can see this, this little thing, this is the cutter this here is the raker. That has two jobs. One job is to set the depth. So the difference in height between the top of that cutting tooth and the top of that peak there, that will determine how deep a shaving this tooth cuts. If that wasn't there, this tooth would be trying to cut, what, four or five millimeters of wood? Well, it wouldn't do it, the saw wouldn't drive it. So this is only literally just shaving you know, tenths of a millimetre or something off at a time. But it's going so fast, and they're all shaving tenths of a millimetre, it actually cuts quite fast. So the difference between the height of the raker, or the depth gauge, and the top of the cutter, also determines how fast your saw works. Um, so, word of warning, don't go out and get a file, and file these things down really, really low, thinking your chain's going to go faster, because it will go faster, but one, you'll put a load more strain on your engine, and two, you put a load more chance on the saw kicking back and cutting your head off. So, on the rakers, there are differences. So we've got the chisel chain, the semi-chisel, and the safety, the hobby chain. On the rakers, we've got a similar thing. So this is just a quick one. On the fast chain, you will literally have almost like a single tooth sticking up. Um, and this is, um, really, really easy to adjust, really easy to fall down, and you'll find a lot of foresters actually have these cut quite, you know, with the big powerful saws, have these cut maybe a bit lower than they should, which is why they're so fast. Uh, this chain has got what we would call the safety link. Okay, so it's actually got two. So if you look at it, there's actually two parts um, to the uh, raker. Part of it is on the cutting link, and part of it is on the drive link on the back. All right, and then on the really uh, hobby saws, the B&Q Special, you'll find that quite often these um, rakers are elongated. They're really long. Now that is literally there for your own safety. For someone who doesn't really know how to use a saw, it will slow your cutting speed right down, but it will also vastly reduce the risk of you getting a kickback and getting your face chewed off by the saw. So, so basically that's, that's what we've got. We've got the Professional, which is just a single tooth sticking up. Excuse my drawings, it was, it's a bit childish, but you get the idea. The semi-professional, which is kind of where this is. And then the real hobby with the long link 
um, which is almost always on a 3 8 low profile as well, to, um, to keep it safe. So this chain is what you would kind of call a semi-professional, got dirt on the lens, hang on a minute, excuse me, a semi-professional chain. Uh, this is kind of the most common. Um, to buy full chisel chain, it's kind of, you buy it on reels and you make it yourself because that is forest commission type stuff. So most of our saws on the tree surgery side will run on these, what we would call like a semi-professional, semi-chisel chain. Uh, so when you're servicing your saw, it pays to know what sort of chain you've got and there, there are limits to how fast your saw will cut. This one will cut reasonably quick on a semi-chisel with those links. Um, but if I was to compare this chain with that, put a, chi a full chisel chain on the same saw and run the two together, the chisel chain would actually run circles around this because it's so much faster, but it is more likely to bite you, okay? So this is a safe, safe-ish, middle of the road, semi-professional chain that we would use. Okay, so where's my little tool gone? There is a tool, this is just a, a version of it, that you can use for measuring your depth of your rakers. And if you look at that, I could, it's just sticking up a tiny little bit. Always measure, this, this needs to be done on a flat surface. A chain bar is not dead flat. So it's not to be really trusted. What you wanna do this is put this in a chain clamp. Most people don't have a chain clamp. I don't use one myself because it just means you've got to take it apart. But um, literally, I could nip the tops off of those rakers. I don't think I will just... Oh, no, I won't I? It is half a mil. I suppose if I can do the job, I'll do it properly. Right, I'll do the rakers. Hang on. Okay, rakers. Rakers are a job for a flat file and this gauge. So I'll start from there. Um, it is easier to file away from you. If you try and file, um, I always try and file the, um, the raker on the far side of the chain away from me, mainly because it makes a horrible noise to do it the way around. So I'll, I'll demonstrate. So literally using the flat file. Oh, missed. Literally, all I've done is nip the tip off of there. I'll see if I can get this a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll do another one. So guide goes on top, sits over the chain and that's it. That's all you need. So now this chain will probably, well, it's going to cut twice as much. It's going to be a lot faster. So I'll have to warn Tom that this chain is going to be faster. Um, I'll demonstrate what I meant about the noise doing it this side. Ah. Ah. Oh, yeah. Got right up my backbone. Ah. Oh. Right, we won't do any more of those. So what we'll do is we'll turn the, we'll turn the chain over and do that. So, so what we're just going to do this side, so... So you haven't got to count the strokes on this because literally the guide does it for you. When you're not cutting anymore, you know you've done it. A lot of arbs are known to do this bit by eye. When you've got the experience, that's fine. But as I'm showing you, if you're maintaining your own saw, just get yourself one of these because it's got all the bits and bobs in here for measuring your angles. You've got your bar cleaner, you've got your measurement. It's, is there a part number on there? No. No, but get one of these. For saw maintenance, it's a cheap and cheerful little thing and just makes life easier. Mm 
as he's not done. He's not. Oh, I've missed one. All right, you got to put out the noise. I'm sorry. Ah, ah, no, it's nasty. I don't like it. Right, there you go. That's it. Oh, it's tacky. Fire out. Put your tools away. There you go. That's it. So that chain is now sharp. It's set to the correct angle. The rakers have been taken down literally half a millimeter, which will make a big difference. Um, I think Tom would be pleased with that. So that's it. I'm go, I've got to uh, go over to the build site. I've got to check on something over there. So I've got to go past Tom's place. So I'm going to give this a wipe over with some disinfectant and leave it at the end of his drive for him. Sorted. So I'm not doing anything else. I'm not going to go anything else with the filters or anything like that um, or the fuel. Uh, the one thing I will say with your, with your saws, um, when you've finished using it, uh, run it dry. Okay, so any unused fuel in, in your saw, when you, if you're not going to use it again for more than a couple of weeks, tip out whatever fuel you've got left um, back in the can, start it up and rev it up and run it dry. Uh, because leaving modern fuels in these little carburetors, it does not like it. Basically what will happen um, over a period of time as that evaporates inside it, it leaves a layer of almost like talcum powder inside your carburetor it fouls everything up and your saw won't go so when you put your saw away or in fact any any small engine your mower your strimmer your saw anything um, when you finish with it if you're not going to use it for more than a couple of weeks run it dry or turn the fuel off and run it dry um, if it's uh, like my mowers i can turn the fuel off on them run the engine dry uh, it takes a little bit longer to start it in the uh, spring or next time, but you've got a clean carb better. And they don't have to run better with a clean carb. Okay, so there you go. Done and dusted, Tom. Hope you're pleased with that. What are you trying to tell me? What? What? Is it that? Is that what you want? You'll get fat. You'll get fat. <laughs> what are you doing down there? We've got a white fronted goose looking at my geese. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not what we're down here for. We've got lambs. So, do some of you remember the you I had to be, give calcium to a couple of weeks ago? She has milk fever or a twin lamb, whatever you want to call it. Well, she has actually produced two lambs. Uh, I don't reckon you're going to be far behind either. In fact, I thought you were going to go first. So we have two new lambs. Um, I've already given them their spectam and uh, dipped the navels. So that's all done. And we've kind of just left her to get on with it. So she's more than happy. So two little ram lambs. You have to do that right behind me. God. Yeah, she's more than happy, so talking to them. So now we can hopefully give her a bit of extra grub and start getting her back in the same condition. So I think what I'll do, actually, is I'll uh, see if I can attract her out of here. And I'll shut that a minute. <laughs> You lot can have some. But I'm just going to give her some of her own. She can take her time. That was that your head. Was that your head? That's a rip sticking it in there. Not quite so much now because there's only three of you. Mind your noggins. Right, get away. That'll keep him quiet. Yeah, yours is coming, don't worry. Uh, 
Oh, right, you've cleansed in there, so we know where that is. Come on then. Got a clean bit of trough here. Who <sighs> dumped in there, eh? Right. There you go. Currents already. Right, so it doesn't got to compete for that bit of grub in there. I'm going to leave her in there by herself now. It's a huge, big lambing pen all to herself. I didn't latch the, latch the gate. So all I need to do really before I put any more lambs in there is just number her and her lambs. And it's done. Right, go look at some grass. Well, that certainly seems to come on out there. Uh, we didn't really get much fertilizer out here, but out there we did, so we'll skip the fence. Mind the jewels. Uh, yeah. I reckon that bit of rain has actually already put on, well, a couple of inches in places. Lumps of lime break up easier now. Oh look, there's a cuckoo flower. It's a pretty little thing, isn't it? Uh, hopefully you can go to seed before anything eats it. Another one there. Always nice to see cuckoo flowers. It's just a shame we don't see the cuckoo anymore. We haven't seen a cuckoo here or even heard a cuckoo for five years. Um, I know it's a destructive, almost parasitic bird, but it's always nice to hear him. So yes, I reckon a week, a bit of warm weather now, and maybe a little bit more rain, we could do with a bit more, and this gets away, some of them can come out here, that'll make them happy. Hmm. Grow. Moss is getting drained now, see? There is the moss right down inside there. Once this grass gets a bit higher and knocks the light out, moss can't compete. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the grass to get up, kill off the moss, just take its light and get away from it. So you wouldn't believe the sheep had only out here a week ago. Week, 10 days. Hardly a turd to be seen. The grass has grown over it. Progress. I'd like it a bit faster, but it's progress.